In this short video, you will see the use of force technology in a four-fenestrated stent graft that is used for an infrarenal EVA device that has a type 1A endoleak. Today we are going to use force technology in a complex aortic case. Uh, this is a 73-year-old patient who has been treated uh, 2003 with an infrarenal uh, EVA for a, at that time relatively small aneurysm, 4.5 centimeter. And this uh, aneurysm has now grown to a diameter of 7.6 centimeter. It had been picked up incidentally uh, as the patient received a CT angiography uh, during his treatment for Mueller dysplastic syndrome. The patient is uh, relatively uh, sick. He has a, a severe comorbidity, cardiac, pulmonary, and also chronic renal insufficiency. So that is a reason why he should be treated with endovascular means. Uh, if we want to take a look at the pre-op uh, images, what you see here that we have the uh, old infrarenal device still in place. There's not significant migration, uh, as you can see. It sits nicely, but what has happened is that uh, the infrarenal seal has been lost. So you see here that due to disease progression, the infrarenal neck has dilated, and now we have a pressure uh, conduction uh, into the aneurysm sac. And the aneurysm sac that you see here has been grown to seven and a half centimeter of uh, diameter. Of course, this is not an everyday case because this patient already has an infrarenal device in place. Um, and this can make fenestrated branch procedures challenging as the stent struts from the older proximal bare stent can be in the way when catheterizing the target vessels. And this uh, is one of the reasons why we expect a specific benefit uh, in this procedure from the force technology which offers us 3D visualization uh, of the target vessels and of the materials that we use. This is the docking base how it is installed and the wire and the catheter that needs to be connected to the table mounted uh, part of the force system. As you know the next step in fenestrated repair is to open partially the fenestrated device, rotating it into the correct position and longitudinally adapting it. As a first target vessel, the right renal artery is used in this case and you see the use of a force cobra catheter in combination with a wire that easily accesses the fenestration and that is controlled in this biplane view. The zoom can be adapted so that you keep the wire tip always in your field of vision and then the force catheter is advanced over the wire into the target vessel. As a next vessel the left renal artery is used and here the force catheter does not has, have the required shape. So we change to our catheter of choice and only use the force wire. So this is a Van Sri 3 catheter uh, and a force wire and you see that you can already see the shape of the Van Sri catheter easily even though only the wire is visualized in the force technology. The catheter is withdrawn and by rotating it we find the fenestration of the device and can access the wire into the left renal artery target vessel. Although the catheter is not visualized, you can see the advancement of the catheter by deformation of the wire. This is the celiac artery, which is somewhat upwards pointing, and we again use the cobra catheter of the force system in combination with the force wire. And you see how, the, how an angiography is used as an underlying DSA image and the wire is now advanced into the splenic artery. 
Again, the force catheter is advanced over the wire until it is in position. The slashed line that you see sometimes shows how much pressure is on the force wire and helps us to understand uh, how much force we can use in the target vessel. And then the force wire is ex exchanged for a stiffer Rosen guide wire. As a last target vessel, the superior mesenteric artery is catheterized. And again, we use a catheter of our choice, which is a different Cobra catheter in combination with a force wire. And you see how easily with a biplanar view, the target vessel is accessed. And because of limitations of access, in this case, only a balloon is positioned in the target vessel. In the typical next steps of a fenestrated repair, the graft is fully deployed and the top cap of the system is collected. Dilatation using a coder balloon is done in order to achieve better graft vessel wall up position. And this is done at two different levels, superior to the fenestrations and at the level of the renal fenestrations. Following this, the typical steps of fenestrated repair are performed, like deploying the bridging stent graft, which in this case is an Advanta V12 covered stent, and using a flaring balloon in order to get best apposition to the nitinal sealing ring of the fenestration. This is fl the flaring step of the right renal artery. After this, a angiography of the target vessel is done and all these steps are repeated for the other three target vessels. This is the final angiography performed with 20 cc of contrast and we see a good perfusion of all four target vessels. There's no sign of a type 1a or type 1b endoleak. There is a small type 2 endoleak, which is typical for most aortic endovascular repairs. And this is a good result in a quick procedure performed with force technology. Um, in this case, it was especially helpful to have force available for the superior mesenteric artery. There was one stent strut of the bare stent that was crossing the ostium, and we had to go around this so that the bridging stent in the future would not be compromised by this uh, stent structure. Uh, having uh, two different projections, lateral and AP, available at the same time helped us significantly to ma maneuver around uh, this uh, structure and get our uh, bridging stent in a safe place. Uh, force technology, in my view, is a very promising technology for uh, any endovascular intervention of the future, as it gives us not only color images, but a three-dimensional view of what we're doing without radiation.